Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be taking a look on how we can use local storage, which is a function of JavaScript, to create and to let our users activate dark mode on our website. Now before we begin checking out the code, you can check out the code for yourself. It's down in the description, linked to my GitHub, in case you want to check it out. You can use it, you can download it, however you want. It's up to you. Alright, let's jump in straight to the code. So first we've got our index.html. And we have a simple div, which has a paragraph with our title. And then we've got the input, which is a type checkbox. It's also got this JavaScript function, which will execute on click. We'll check that out in a second. Then we've got our script link right here. We've got it at the bottom so that our DOM, you know, the rest of the code in the page loads before it starts executing JavaScript. Because as we'll see in a second, there is a function, there's a JavaScript function that will execute as soon as the page loads. So let's check out the JavaScript code, which is the interesting part of the video. We first have a const to check that's just going to refer to the input so that we don't have to constantly type out the document or get on by the check. Then we've got an if that starts using local storage. Now, local storage, you can come check that out on your browser if you do F12 or you uh, click and then you say inspect. And this uh, menu will pop up. And then if we come to application, we can see here the inside of storage, local storage, and you'll see for your website. Now how local storage works is that you have a key and a value. So the key would be like the ID or the name of whatever you're trying to use. And the value is at what state that is, that's in. So in our case, we have dark mode and it is false because right now it is in light mode. But if dark mode gets activated, if we click the, the check, it becomes true. So in order for our code to work, we're going to have to have a default so that we can activate or deactivate because as we'll see in a second, it'll check if it's activated or not. So this is just to make sure that uh, the page when it loads has something at least by default. So it checks if there's anything as a value for dark mode in local storage. If there's not, the default will be false. If you wanted your page to be by default on dark mode, you would have to change from false to true right here. Then it's going to check status, which is this function here, which what this does is that when the page loads, it'll check the status of the page. So it'll get the local storage item. And if the dark mode is activated, it'll give the both, well, in this case, our paragraph and the background of our page, the necessary styling for it to be on dark mode. And if not, then it's going to give it the styling for the page being on light mode. We can also see that it checks or unchecks the, our, our input as the page so that the user knows when it's on and off. And on the last function of our code, we have the change status, which is that function that we were referring to before. This function uh, will execute when you click the button and it'll do the exact same thing. It'll check if dark mode was activated. If it was activated, it will now deactivate it because it means that when you click it, you want it off. So it'll give it the necessary stylings and then the other way around. If it was not activated, then we set it to now it's active and it'll change it to dark mode. Now there's a second version I've done, which is this one right here, which just makes it easier to work with in case you have a big web page with a lot of elements. It's not very efficient to give the styling of every element on your JavaScript. You want to give the HTML labels their styling on a, C on a CSS file. So what I've done is I've created a dark.css file where if you see, if you take a look, it's really just the other CSS. It's not really more complicated, but imagine we had a big web page with a lot of buttons and inputs and whatever. We would need a lot of different stylings for them. So it is a lot easier to just load up this dark CSS file. The only notable changes we have on this code, it's pretty much the same, is that we need to add, we can either add it on our HTML, which I've, you know, commented it here if you want to use it that way, or we can create it with JavaScript, which is, I think, a lot cooler. We just create this, which is a link referring to a style sheet, and then we give it a URL. So by default, it doesn't have a URL, which means it's going to be by default on light mode. And when we click on the dark mode, it gets our it gets the style sheet, which is dark.css, which makes the entire website dark. So this will apply all the changes from the CSS file and the only changes on side of the functions, same for both functions. Instead of having different styles for uh, dark or light mode, we just have here, we remove the link for light mode and then we add the link for dark mode. That's about it. That's all the notable changes. So thank you so much for watching. I hope this helped you learn a bit of how local storage work or maybe even that it existed in the first place. I think it's a really neat tool because now if we reload our page and we activate dark mode and we reload our page, it'll save our preferences. Even if I close the browser, open it back up and then 
go back to what I had open, it'll rem it will remember our preferences. As long as the browser memory isn't touched, the feature should be activated all the time. So thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.